Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be part two of my guide to seasons. If this is what you're looking for, please stay tuned. All right, folks, welcome back to my seasons guide. And this is in Farming Simulator 19, just to clarify in case you didn't know. Um, so this is the basics. I know we did the introduction uh, for part one, but this is just going to kind of go into some more details about a few more things you need to know. So a couple of just uh, notes about seasons in general. So um, daylight changes in seasons. So what I mean by that is winters may only have eight hours of light and summers may be closer to like 17 or more hours of light. So the, like the amount of light you get in a day or in a work day is going to change a little bit with uh, seasons. So um just be aware of that. So in the winter time, you're likely going to have obviously much shorter days and less time to work. And in the summer, you're going to have the best days to work. And then spring and fall is going to be somewhere in the middle of those two. Um, that's kind of important to know as far as you'll, you'll start to notice it getting darker and everything like that. I mean, it's more realistic to the way it normally would be. Now, that can change depending on what geo you have installed. We talked about geos briefly in the previous uh, part to this tutorial. So just be aware of that. The geos can change that, but that's in general. Um, let's talk about mod conflicts. So if you're running seasons, there could be some mod conflicts. Now, if you're on console, you don't have to worry about that. No matter what mods you put in, in general, they shouldn't really cause any conflicts. Uh, but, um, mods on PC that you can add in that can cause conflicts are usually mods that manipulate or change the weather, animals, or growth. So those can cause issues. Um, so just be aware of that. Now, some, um, mods that change pricing and stuff like that can cause conflicts, but you usually won't really notice it. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, so yeah, it, it changes. Um, let's go into the seasons menu, which if you remember is alt S to open on PC. Um, we're going to go into the weather menu. We're going to talk a little bit more about this and get some more details. So we kind of briefly went over how all of it, um, was in here and how it's laid out. So we're just going to expand on that. So, uh, first off know that frost or drought can affect crops. So if you're not going to have any moisture uh, that can affect the crops. Um, and it depends on the different crops as far as how, what's going to affect them and stuff like that. Um, We'll look at that here in a, in a sec. I should look at it real quick. So as far as drought and, um, and frost, to know kind of where your plant is as far as if it's going to be affected by that or not. And in this menu here, you'll have the frost resistance for um, the seed young and mature of a plant and then drought resistance for seed young and mature. So for example, we look at wheat at the top here. Uh, frost resistance, when it's a seed, medium frost resistance. So um, if it has some frost, it has a medium chance of causing issues. Um, or, you know, it's kind of in the middle. Um, now when it's a young plant, high frost resistance, there's, it's going to do very well, even if it gets below freezing, which is essentially what frost resistance mean. There's going to be frost. So it's going to be below freezing. Um, if it's mature, there's none. So it's going to die pretty much pretty quickly. If it's going to have any frost or it's going to get below freezing, it's just going to die very quickly. Now, um, drought resistance as a seed, the water, it's got to have some soil moisture. Always it's going to die. It has a little bit on when it's young and then when it's uh, mature, it has a fair amount. Now, again, you can see this varies depending on the crop type. So make sure you look in here and kind of understand some of that as far as that goes. But if we go back over to the weather menu here, um, this is kind of something you need to look at as far as um, soil temperature and stuff like that. Um, or not, yeah, soil temperature, precipitation, weather forecast. So if you're going to be planting crops, you need to think more about some of these things. Now we're going to go into details on crops and that's going to be, I believe in the next part of this series, we're going to start talking about actually planting crops and doing that. But just as far as the weather goes, you got to pay attention to that stuff. So precipitation is very important. Um, and then as far as temperature, that is very important. So these days actually look pretty nice through here, but if you're going to have a day, that's going to get below 32 degrees, depending on what you're planting, you may not want to plant it or you may want to hold off. Sometimes it doesn't affect it. And I'll talk a little bit about, um, how it's going to affect that. Cause in general, in normal gameplay, if your field has issues or it withers, for example, the whole field's withered, it's done. Um, but that's not how it works in seasons. Seasons actually makes it much more realistic, which is pretty cool. Now, a couple other notes. Um, there's a completely new sky and obviously weather system. So in seasons, there's, there's different sky textures, different stuff like that. Weather can change rapidly. Uh, through the day, there's different weathers. You can have multiple different types of weather throughout the day versus in normal gameplay, you only have a couple of weather types and it's going to happen just kind of um, as it does. So you might have thunderstorms, you might have, uh, you know, rain. I mean, look, you can see different, like you have rain here, you have cloudy here, sunny here, partly cloudy uh, here. Um, down here we have, you know, partly cloudy, but with rain. So it's, I mean, you have all sorts of different variations of weather, which uh, adds a lot of realism to it. 
Now, another thing to note as well, wind speed matters a lot. So a couple of things that it affects. So it does affect how fast grass dries, which I touched on that, which there's the drying potential down here. So faster wind speeds is gonna be higher drying potential. Um, so that's something you need to be aware of. If you're looking at doing hay um, and you're cutting grass to do hay, which we'll go into detail on that as well later, um, you need to make sure the weather is set to go for you. You need to make sure that you're gonna have the drying potential you need. There's gonna be some wind speed um, that's going to be up there a little bit in order to help get that. Now, obviously, this ends here. Your drying potential, you're not going to see too far in the future for it. So just be aware of that. Um, beyond that, another thing it does actually kind of change, which is pretty cool, I think. This is one of the cooler aspects, I think, of uh, the wind speed. So it will uh, it will affect the income you get from wind turbines, actually. So if there's lower wind speed, you're going to get less income from wind turbines. As far as if there's more wind speed, you're going to get more income. Uh, from wind turbines and um, the wind turbines in general should follow the wind speed so if it's a really low wind speed they'll be turning very slowly and if it's a high wind speed they should be turning uh, much faster so uh, make sure you look over this weather forecast and keep it very familiar and keep looking at it now a couple things we need to talk about as well is the snow mask so essentially what a snow mask is is it's something a modder puts into a map or it's in some of the base maps that allows snow to be able to work on that map and allows everything to kind of work on that map uh, the way it should as far as seasons go so you can have snow on and off we've already talked about that in the settings in the first part of this um, but when a, a modder sets up a map um, some buildings they have to configure to work with seasons so that's why if you see something that says a map is seasons ready in the mod hub that means it's kind of it has a snow mask it's good to go for seasons I mean, it's not going to hopefully cause you any issues. So, for example, if you have a bale barn, you're going to expect your bales to be safe in there from the weather and conditions. Now, if a map is not seasons ready, that may not be the case. So that's why that kind of matters. Now, one other quick note on snow. Um, there's two layers of snow usually that can come. I don't think there's three. As far as I know, there's only two that can occur. Uh, the first one you can clear out with a snow plow, no problem, and it's not as difficult to drive through. And if you put salt down on it, it's going to melt the snow pretty much immediately. Now, if there's two layers of snow down... Um, then the salt may not melt all the snow or you may have to go over it multiple times and it's going to be harder to push around. So just something to kind of uh, be aware of. Now, another thing we need to talk about is rain and bale rot. So like rain, snow, precipitation is going to rot bales and loose product you have sitting out. Uh, so that's what it kind of matters for, for buildings and stuff like that. So if you have a building that's not actually protecting your crops, then you're going to have issues with uh, bales rotting if they're not under a shed. So here we are on Erlingrat, which should work fine with season. So if I have a bale uh, sitting out here, for example, it's going to rot if the rain comes. The the volume of that bale is slowly going to decrease. So the, the bale itself is always going to be good, but it's slowly going to decrease in volume. Um, so essentially, it's not necessarily that the whole bale is going to go bad if it's in the rain for too long. What's going to happen is you're going to lose portions of the bale. So a bale in Farming Simulator has 4,000 liters. Now, if I leave it out here in the rain, it's gonna have less than that after a while. So it's gonna slowly lose um, until it finally runs out. Now, if you put it in a shed or a garage here, it'll be fine indefinitely. Same with loose product. If you have loose product, for example, that you're mowing and then all of a sudden it rains and you haven't picked up all your grass or baled all the grass that you have or hay or whatever, um, or straw for that matter on a field after you've harvested, um, the rain is gonna start slowly kind of killing that off and rotting it away. So just something to kind of keep in mind with all that. Now, uh, another thing that's pretty cool with seasons, um, I will say, is how weeds work. So weeds are going to be uh, kind of sporadic. So um, if we come down to like a field down here, well, actually, I'll probably demonstrate this a little bit better when we actually go into crops and talk about crop, ter crop care. But uh, so if we go into the map here, let's say we're up, where are we at? We're up over here. So we're on this grass field. But let's say field four right here. Um, if we go to this menu right here, we shouldn't see any weeds on here really right now because um, weeds aren't necessarily going to go. So normally, if you had field four and you weren't running seasons, you're on normal gameplay. If you got weeds that pop up, if you had weeds turned on, which we have weeds turned on um, in here, we should. Yep, weeds are turned on. I need to turn that off. I actually lost our original save game for this tutorial series, but that's a whole other issue. But anyhow, going back into here, if we had weeds turned on in base game, this whole field would get weeds and you'd have to take care of it. It just kind of is how the mechanic works. That's not how weeds work in real life. So seasons kind of adjust that to make it a little bit more realistic. So um, every day when seeds have the potential to grow, which we'll talk about that in a second, um, they'll they'll pop up in sporadic little chunks throughout your field. So they'll be kind of just kind of randomized and there'll be little chunks of them everywhere. So you can either go deal with them like that um, or you also have the ability in seasons two, if I wanted to, let's say I own field four, I planted down some crop or something and I don't want to deal with weeds at all. I can spray this whole field with herbicide and I won't ever have weeds for the season or for the year, I should say. Um, so, and they only germinate again in random sections at random times each day 
Um, and mechanical weeders don't work as a preventative measure. They only work to actually take care of young weeds when they're out there. And the weeds can die. It's, uh, I don't think I've ever had that happen to me, but uh, they theoretically speaking can die if there's not ideal temperature and weather conditions, and they can grow faster or slower depending on the weather conditions. So just something to be aware of. Um, now there are some new growth states added in here, which we'll take a look at now um, that are new that are added in for seasons. So we have planted, germinated, and germination failed. Those are three new growth states. So planted is right here. Uh, normally it just goes right to growing. Um, and then we have germination failed, and then I don't see germinated on here actually. So this could be an out of date uh, guide here as far as uh, what they have written down. But uh, so I guess yes, planted. So I guess they go right into growing, which makes sense. So um, you have planted, germination failed, and then they're going to go into their first state of growing if the germination is successful. So germinated failed. Um, I don't think we're probably going to probably not going to find any of it on here right now. We'll probably have to wait until we get further into our crop tutorial, but. If it, and it'll also be random too. So normally if something happens to a field in base game, it's going to happen to the whole field. There's no exceptions. It just happens throughout the field. It's constant. The whole field gets hit by it. But with germination, if the plants or if the, the seed you planted is not going to germinate, it'll happen in patches. Now it could happen to the whole field if it's really bad or you had really poor planting, but usually it happens in little patches throughout the field. So if you had field four, there might be a few patches that are germination failed, but the rest might grow just fine. So just something to kind of be aware of. Now, germ germination happens every day with the, with the right temperature. So um, if it's not warm enough, it's not going to happen. Um, so you can plant seed um, when it's not necessarily the right temperature or it's a little bit lower of a temperature than what, for example, the seasons menu has um, as far as a ideal temperature for planting, which is right here for the crops. Um, so, and you look up in the menu there, we're not at ideal planting temperatures for any of these crops in here, but you can plant the seeds um, when you're not here, but they may not, they're, they're not going to germinate until after that. And you have a higher chance of the germination failing if you don't plant until you hit uh, the correct soil temperature here. So just something to, to be aware of as far as that goes. Um, as far as the rest of that goes, uh, crops planted late can germinate, but will never mature. So if you plant them super late, they can still germinate. So for example, the planting area or window for sunflowers is right here. If I plant, or for any of these crops, if I plant them here in the summertime, they may still germinate, but they're probably never going to be ready to harvest. So just something to note. Now, again, there's a second planting window, but we'll talk more about that um, in uh, the next parts coming up. So just something to be aware of. Now, there are three maturity levels for plants in seasons. There's planted, uh, young, and mature. There's not different necessarily growing growth states. So if we go back into the map here, um, there's just those three states. So these ones necessarily are not all going to show up. You'll notice as we go through this tutorial, not all these shades of green are going to show up. Um, so just something to be aware of. Now, sometimes the the thing that I'll throw you off a little bit, we all know in base game when you see like wheat, for example, when it gets that nice like kind of golden dried out look, you know, it's ready to harvest. That could happen. It could have that look on seasons, but not actually be ready to harvest yet. So you still need to check it. But there's only essentially three growth states. So just kind of something to be aware of. It's a little bit different. And sometimes it might take multiple days for one growth state, depending on what's going on. Um, and obviously it depends on how long a seasons you're running and everything like that. So things can vary a little bit. Now, the next thing we're going to go into detail on is crop rotation. So if we go into the seasons menu, here's the crop rotation uh, planner. So different crop rotation uh, have or different crop rotations have different beneficial results to yield. So you can have a better or worse yield compared to the base game yield. So for example, um, if I go put wheat in here, that's the that's the yield percent there. So that's 86% yield. So I know it's 0.86. So 1.00 would be 100%. You're going to get your normal yield. Now, obviously, fertilizer and weeds and all that other stuff can affect the actual yield as well. So fertilizer is still going to cause a boost to your to your yield um, in seasons. But in general, this is just kind of a baseline to kind of look at. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about crop rotation here just kind of to finish out. So this is what we're going to finish off this um, uh, part of the series on so one thing to note there are the way the crop rotation planner works so you can put let's say i put wheat barley and then i put oats let's say i'm going to plant these three things now this is empty right here so this isn't affecting the rotation at all so the way this works is it's expecting you to do wheat and let's say you have wheat planted there then it's expecting barley then oats and then wheat barley oats so it's a circle don't look at it as a line down and then it stops it's a circle so it's anticipating this in a circle so if i change this to cotton, for example, it changes everything because 
if I go back, so that's a cereal crop, which is going to have the same effects as other cereal crops. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, see, 0 0.86, 0 0.86, 0 0.86. So now oats is going to change because if I plant a grass before oats, that's going to change the oat outcome to 1.14. Now, if wheat gets planted after um, oats now, since we had the grass before, so grass, cereal, cereal, then it's going to be 0.95. So it changes everything if you adjust that. Now, there are different crop types in here. So we have cereals. Um, which is going to be, we'll just take a look at all of them. So wheat's a cereal, barley's a cereal, oat is a cereal, cotton is a grass, canola is an oil seed, sunflowers are an oil seed, uh, soybeans are a legume, uh, corn is a cereal crop, potatoes are a nightshade, um, sugar beets are a root crop, poplar is a grass, um, grass is a grass, uh, sugar cane is a grass, and then there's a fallow, which we'll talk about fallows here in a second. Let me get this um, turned off here. We should be able to go back. Where is the beginning there? No, I can't find it. I guess it's not. Oh, that's right. I have to turn this one off first. Um, there we go. Now it'll let me turn that off. So um, a fallow means that you're not going to plant anything that year. So if this is field. So if we go back to our. Oops. Sorry about that. If I go back to my field here, if we're talking about field uh, four here, if we go back into the seasons planter, let's say one year we decide not to plant. Let's say we had uh, wheat in there. Um, then we're not going to plant it for a year. So I'm going to put fallow in and then we want to do wheat or maybe we want to do barley again. So you can see the yield goes up. So having the field be able to rest is actually could be beneficial. Now, again, you're not going to get a harvest off of that field for that year. So obviously you don't want to plant it where all your fields are going to be in a fallow at one time. Now, the one I think big drawback that Seasons kind of has, which I'd like to have improved, is you only have four rotation planters. So normally I try to say, let's say if I have 10 fields, I might have three fields on rotation plan A, uh, two fields on B, two on C, and then another three on D. So I kind of try to do it like that because... It doesn't have the ability to have them all. If I, I think you should have a be able to label them with a number and then do it that way or have maybe your fields that you sh you own show up in here. I think that that would be a good addition to seasons. But anyhow, this is what we have for now. Um, so we'll talk about a couple examples of crop rotation. But uh, if we go to a field, for example, so we're going to walk up to field four, which is right over here. We'll go talk about field four since this is a good example for us since we've been talking about it the whole time. I mean, I am an on, am I am, I am on Erlingrad, if you guys are wondering. So if you look on here, down there in the bottom right-hand corner, so it says previous, it had grass. So it had grass on it before, which is makes sense. It looks like it had cotton on it, which is a grass. And then before that, it had a cereal crop on it. So that matters. So if we go into our crop rotation planner, um, it had a cereal two times before, and then it had a grass. So we know it had cotton, but it doesn't matter what grass. We could put any grass on here. Um, as long as it's a grass crop, it's going to give the same effects. Now, if I put that back down, so this is what happened. It had wheat in it or any cereal crop, then grass. Now we can decide what we're going to plant based on what it had in the previous. So when you buy a new field, that's how you can tell what you had previously on it. So, um, and we can take a look. So let's see, we could obviously do a fallow. Now, if we did wheat again, um, we don't need to worry about their yields up there. We need to worry about this. This is what we're planning this year as far as our plans are concerned. So wheat would do a decent yield. We can scroll through. Cotton wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, canola would be okay. Uh, sunflowers would be okay. Um, is there anything better? Potatoes would be terrible, as you can see, 0.71. Sugar beets would be not bad, or, or not good, sorry. Um, it looks like our best option if we wanted to plant something is going to be a cereal crop. So we could do it in our cereal crop. Now, then, again, it's anticipating. So if you planted a cereal crop this year, next year, it's going to, unless you put more down here, it's going to, again, be like a circle. Don't look at it as a line. Look at it as a circle. So now the next thing it's going to go to is it's thinking you're going to plant wheat again. And now you can kind of start adjusting that or you can keep going down. So let's say we do wheat this year and then we're like, okay, let's see what, what should we plant the next year? Uh, grass would be okay. An oil seed actually would be good. So let's plant some canola. That's a good oil seed there. Um, and then let's see here. What's another one? We could do another cereal crop. So we could do cereal, oil seed, cereal. And that seems to do okay. Now, if we go over here, let's actually just test that out without anything to see if that actually is a decent... Uh, now, obviously you can see too, this is interesting. Just planting wheat on a field is just 0 0.86. It's just strange that it has that for you. But if we do a fallow wheat, then you're always going to get a good wheat yield. But again, um, with that, it might be better to do that two years in a row. But it kind of depends. It's all up to you. But if we did then, let's say, an oil seed like sunflowers, and then we did another cereal crop, you can see this is actually not a bad way to go about it. Now, if I do another oil seed here, um, what we're doing is doing cereal, oil seed, cereal, oil seed, then cereal, oil seed, cereal, oil seed. So this actually doesn't look like a bad rotation. We're getting above 100% on all of our different crop types. Now, if we throw a fallow in there, um, these two are going to both be 1.2, which is great. So we could actually do really good. Um, now, let's say we make this one the oil seed. So here's an example of a good rotation. Let's put an oil seed there, and we'll put a cereal here. We'll make this a fallow. 
And so we do cereal, oil, seed, fallow, cereal, oil, seed, and then if we do a fallow here, we're getting really good yield every year, and every third year we're just skipping it. So then you can kind of plan out. So again, just play with this, figure out what works for you. I mean, if you're gonna be a potato farmer, let's say, so we'll go to a nightshade. Um, potatoes, we gotta find something that's gonna work with potatoes a little bit better. So uh, wheat's not a good way. I mean, it does boost it up, but wheat's gonna be a terrible yield. So let's find something that works complementary. Uh, an oil seed, 0.9 and 0.9, that's better than what we had originally. Um, let's see, and sometimes there's just not stuff that works good with it. It just is what it is. So potatoes back to back actually aren't too bad. Now, if we did potatoes another year in a row, let's see how bad it gets. So see those ones back to back. This is one of the crops that it does not get affected if you just keep doing it, if you're gonna do it, if that's what you wanna do. Now, if you threw uh, potatoes up here as well, let's get to potatoes here. And let's say we wanted to in here put a fallow in. So we skip a year. Look at that, 108%. 0.9% now again, then we probably need to put a fallow in here to keep it. So, cause it'd be potatoes, potatoes, fallow, potatoes, potatoes, fallow. So then we're getting 108%, 90%. So we're doing pretty good on that. So again, you can mess with it and some crops will work different with each other and some will be um, okay to plant back to back. But that's just kind of an overview of the um, crop rotation planter. And again, um, just before we wrap this up, if you guys have questions about seasons at all, feel free to drop them down in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to have answered in this series. Um, I should be going through the guide pretty well to be able to cover everything, and I shouldn't miss anything, hopefully. Um, yeah, so essentially the next part is probably going to be talking about crops. Um, I think that'll be the next part, and we'll start covering, we'll still cover little basic details of seasons as we go through, but I want to start getting into crops, which that might even be two videos, and then we want to talk about animals, which animals will be at least probably, we might even do a video per animal, honestly, and those videos might be a little bit shorter, so we might do that, and then we'll also talk about grass work, um, and some stuff like that, vehicle maintenance, everything like that. We got a lot of stuff to cover on in this series because Seasons is a fairly complicated um, mod, but I want to kind of divide it up. I could do just a three hour video to cover it all, but I don't think that would be as exciting to watch. So anyhow, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on your screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and watching.